and my wife is going to kill me for showing you this back patio because uh, I mean it looks all right to me but to her this is a wreck uh, we, we need to get the uh, all the rock power wash or I need to come out here and pressure wash it and clean it up and uh, we need to get it rest the pergola restained it's just uh, she wants new furniture back here I don't see anything wrong with the furniture that's here um, so it's just I like it yeah, I mean I like the patio but uh, she's, she's probably gonna kick my tail for showing this on uh, up close on YouTube yeah, she's darkening on up. Yeah, I think it's about time for those bad boys to get on up out of here. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And uh, again, I've talked about this a little bit in my previous videos. I've got two cameras going. One's filming in 4K, one's filming in 2.7K. Uh, the GoPro 9s, 2.7K, GoPro 8s, 4K. You guys that get into all that, I'm trying to learn the correct color settings on my GoPro so that you can see real color when you look at it on your phone, what it actually looks like to my eye. And of course, I see that when I'm editing and all that. And I don't know how to do all that color correcting stuff and all that and I'm not going to get into all that so I'm trying to figure it out how to have my camera set correctly when I'm filming so uh, throughout the video I'm going to throw up some different shots and let you know which one's which and you guys comment tell me which one the color looks the best I would appreciate it. So a little backstory on my patio. When I redone my uh, yard about eight or nine years ago or so, uh, I had a couple friends from church come over. I designed the pergola. I kind of thought it up in my head and designed it. The little shapes out toward the end, the little curly looking shapes, I kind of, you know, just kind of envisioned what I want it to look like. I drew one out, we made a template, and then we uh, produ mass produced all those off that template. And those guys did a great job. These are six by six posts, I believe. There's one, two, three out here. I've got two anchored against the house and then they have these braces that come down and brace everything and lock everything in. And then I just thought it'd be super cool to have this, uh, this freestanding single row pergola. I just, I just, I don't know what made me think of it. I may have saw it in a book or something somewhere, but I just thought that was cool. So I put one here. I've got one over there and I've got one over there. They're all very symmetrical. Uh, I'm crazy anal about that. So they've been uh, placed in the exact location with a tape measure. So everything is perfectly even and squared and the same, you know, width apart and all that kind of thing. My pavers here, uh, I got on sale in the fall from Lowe's for 75% off. They were they were 50% off in the fall because they were just on sale. And then I got the Lowe's guy, uh, if I bought a certain amount of them, he'd give me an extra 15% off. And then I had a 10% coupon off. So I ended up getting it for 75% off. I paid about $2,000 roughly for all of the rock you see here every bit of it i only paid about two grand for it so that was a crazy good deal I had pallets out here when all this used to be dirt and me and my kids uh my kids were young then my two oldest were young then and i i've done all this with strings uh, meaning i didn't laser it or anything like that i put a string here and used a line level and then I had multiple strings going across here and I had them measured and you know, all that kind of thing is super old fashioned uh, way to do it. And I, I come out here with my rake and a tamp and I, I raked all this, uh, the little gray fines that you put up under you, I think you call it a paver base or something. And so all this was done by hand uh, by me and my kids, my kids toted me every single block. That was their job for that, that month was that they had to bring me the block and daddy was on his hands and knees and I placed them out and, and got everything put in. And then my furniture uh, came from Lowe's 
and I got it on, I want to say it was, I think it was a 50% sale. I know it looks super expensive. You're like, oh man, that guy's got a $50,000 patio. Well, I'm nowhere remotely close to that. I'm as tight as a tick when it comes to that kind of thing. And I've done my homework, I've done my research, uh, and found the sales when they were on sale. And I had the money at the time. And so I jumped on it. So I ended up saving a boatload of money uh, on what this right here and I, actually that two thousand dollars includes that rock wall over there for the rock um, all the patio rock all this stone and the rock over there for the retaining wall was a total of two grand so they hey i mean how much better of a deal can you get uh, uh, as i got pretty lucky or fortunate whatever you want to call it but this patio was a very is a very budget friendly patio uh for me just because i got lucky and found the right deal at the right time now one thing i like about my patio is color okay i like i like these pots i know a big brawly dude that you know shoots guns and all that kind of crap uh is a little flower pansy pot guy but i am and uh these are some really cool pots uh i think that's a clay type material um, I really don't know what it's made of. It's very heavy. So this right here is some annual color. Okay, annual meaning you change it out. Uh, this is not permanent plants. And these are pansies. And typically pansies, you would plant them in the fall. They're going to last throughout the winter and on into the spring when it starts getting warm. Uh, around here, it's around the May time frame. That's when you remove the pansies and you replace it with a summer flower. And in this case, these right here were vinca, this was lantana, uh, dragon wing begonia right here. And it's just opposite for those. It's at sometime around, in my area in North Carolina, around the May time frame, you plant the summer annuals and they'll go all the way up until the first frost and then they get zapped. You can see these, some of these have bit the dust. We had a very mild frost the other day and that really set them back. Uh, but uh, typically I would have these pulled out before that first frost and get these in the ground so they have time to root and get going. I'm way behind on my schedule and things in the yard so it is what it is. So today I'm going to plant these jokers and show you how to do it. So I can't take everything out of the pot because the way the pot is, the way I built the uh, structure of the pot, I got some pea gravel down here in the very bottom and then i've got some of that landscape fabric i cut out and put right on top and then i left a good six inches for dirt and what that does is it allows the pot to drain okay what you don't want with a pot and i'm not an expert on this so some of you super gardeners you may be able to comment and say something a little different but what you don't want is the pot to hold water okay you don't want root rot with your plants because too much water is just as bad or worse than not enough water. So you want this to drain uh, properly. So that's why I put peat gravel in the bottom. Then I put that landscape fabric on which water will penetrate that. And the reason the fabric is on there is to keep from my dirt from mixing into the pea gravel so that when the water drains, I don't get dirt and mud and yucky all over my rock here. And that's worked for years. I've yet to see when it rains or water or whatever, I've yet to see dirt come out from the pot and get on here so that that pea gravel and that fabric is doing its job i am a i am a once a year guy on uh changing out the the dirt or the soil in my uh, pots here and what i mean by that is i like to i like to freshen this up about once a year and we did that last spring when i planted the summer annuals and so i don't really need to put fresh dirt in here now and again next summer i'll take all this dirt out you know chunk it in the garden or wherever use it somewhere else and then i'll put fresh dirt in here i just uh no no real scientific reason on that or whatever and actually these were petunias not uh lantana uh sorry about that but i don't have a real scientific reason or whatever to for changing that i just like to change out the ground uh once a year so obviously the first thing you got to do is get rid of the summer stuff. 
All right, so there's all my summer junk. Now, obviously, I'll take my blower and blow any any mess I make. I'm gonna blow it off and clean it up and all that. But what I'm gonna do is basically take this ground in here and I'm gonna put it in a bucket. You see, I've got a bucket right here. So once I get all my dirt out that I'm going to take out, and obviously there's a hundred different ways to do this. I just like removing the dirt, putting the plants in, and then fill it back filling with dirt. That's just the way I like to do it. It works out easiest for me. This right here is Ogon, uh, or Ogon, or Agon, or however you want to say it. It's kind of like an ornamental grass that'll, that does good in the winter. And what I'll do is sit these in here. What I'm doing is looking for my root ball to be about even with the top of my pot here. And of course, that's a little bit low, so I need to put a little bit more dirt in there. So that right there is about right. Uh, my design on this is I like the taller things in the back or in the center. And the shape of these six inch pansies, I can't get three of them in here in a triangle and then get that in the middle uh that would have been one way so what i'm doing is putting it toward the rear of the pot so that uh you know when everything's blooming and really glowing in the spring this will kind of be towering over the things in the front you don't want to put your uh, taller things in the front and shorter things in the back and obviously that depends on your view right it depends on me and obviously that depends on your view okay i could put it here and the viewpoint would be from the road looking in well i don't go out and sit in the road and enjoy a sun drop on you know sitting in a chair i'm typically sitting right here in my patio when i do that so my viewpoint is coming from the patio and looking this way toward the plant so that's why i'm i'm calling this the rear and i'm a pretty symmetrical guy like i said earlier and the way i've got these laid out i've got two whites and then a purple on the in the, on the front so i'm gonna put this white one here and i call it purple it's the closest thing to tar heel blue you can get in the pansy and you know i got my blue and white right here for all you uh duke fans and wolfpack fans and all you folks i like to show off my my tar heel colors every now and then you need a little bit of dirt up under them to get them raise them up just a touch like that pet peeve serious pet peeve take the tag out now you can see i got my two white pansies my purple in the middle and now i rotated that over there uh, i put uh, two purple and one white i'll show you that in a minute now basically all i gotta do is backfill uh, around all the plants I want to fertilize them while I'm here. I've got something very unique I've been working on. And look at this. Look at that micro fine uh, material right there. That is a super fine fertilizer. And what I like to do is just dump it in my dirt. And then I'm basically just going to take it and mix it all up in the dirt that I'm getting ready to backfill with. So now my fertilizer will be incorporated throughout the entire pot, not just sitting on top and waiting to be watered in or whatever. It will be incorporated throughout the entire root zone of the pot. And then the easy part, you just come back in here and start backfilling with a little bit of dirt. Soil, as some people call it. We call it dirt around here expect to make a little bit of a mess and that's completely fine that's part of the fun is making a little bit of a mess and we're working really really hard uh, on some of these new fertilizers you've been hearing me talk about in the grass videos and that kind of thing and i uh, should be able to tell you a little bit more about those here pretty soon and basically come in here and tidy it up a little bit i like to right around the edge just kind of press down just a little bit to create a little bit of a lip 
so that when I do water, when it rains and it gets a little full, it's not likely to run over, maybe to catch that inside, that little groove and, you know, kind of filter down the inside wall of the pot and uh, save me a mess. So, let me go get my blower, blow all this clean, and I can show you the uh, finished product, what the whole patio looks like. Well, there's your finished product right there, and like I said, I've got my two whites, and I'll, we'll call that Tar Heel Blue. I know it's not, but we'll call it that. Uh, well, I better call it like you see it, brother. That's, uh, I don't know. We might can get a little bit of Tar Heel Blue out of the edge there. And here's what the whole thing looks like. Column, uh, column, your bench, and then got my two pots right there. Uh, it turned out pretty good. And over here is kind of the entrance to my backyard. I've got two more columns, got pots on the ground and uh, pots up on the columns. And uh, I've got ornamental kale right here where I've got the Ogon, Ogon uh, in the back up here. Now the ornamental kale, it'll bush out and bu uh, fill out really good and then have a bloom that'll come up to about right here during the springtime and uh, be full of bloom so that'll look really good and over here well look at there that's a little bit more tar heel blue now over here i've got the two purple and a white two purple white and then the same here and then this side over here two white purple match match that side over there so again i know i'm late on about all this a lot of things in the yard this year are late especially in the fall, uh, simply because we just had one heck of an October. I mean, I was out of work for two weeks with COVID, had an employee who had kids uh, with COVID, and he was out for two weeks, had two different other, two other employees, they had a grandpa died, so they were out for a time, but everything's starting to come back together. So I hope this helped. Uh, I know a lot of you probably do pots and that kind of thing, and you probably have your own way of doing it and that's all completely cool i'm not in any way trying to say that my way is the perfect way or the only way or the best way it's just a way to do it and uh obviously you want to keep these watered um for the most part you you want to water your pots a little more often say than you would water flowers in the ground uh, simply because there's not as much ground there to retain moisture and keep it all there and uh, the, the heat from the sun will warm up the pot and evaporate some of the water off. There's many, many, many things. Uh, you just use common sense. A pot just takes a little more watering, a little more frequent watering than plants in the ground. Say, so, I appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, share, tell all your buddies. Typically, we're a grass channel. My niche, my theme, my passion, my go-to, my uh, career of what I do for a living day in and day out been doing it for 18 years now uh, 15 years growing turf lawn care 18 actually growing turf uh, 15 16 years roughly but that's what we do is grow turf here and show the DIY crowd how to do it using pro grade products and all that kind of thing and uh, I love it man I love doing these videos I'm very thankful and grateful to have the opportunity just to be able to show you a little bit of what i know i think it's the coolest thing ever and uh the it's something that's even cooler is when i get those emails and it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them of before and after uh, results hey pete i did this in my yard you showed on a video or i followed your cool season guide or your warm season guide and look at what i got and it's just it's very humbling and uh, satisfying for me uh, that people all over the country are getting a nice yard and having some nice grass all because we're making a video and showing you how to do it. I think it's the coolest thing ever. So hey, again, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. Thank you for watching. I'll check you later.